You left too soon to hear the doorbell. <laughs> you must have. I'll get out. Do this on purpose. I feel needed, Mike. <laughs> the, the, the man behind the curtain. <laughs> 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 Oh, yes. And we had that one chosen. And we must have just, that one was clicked when I when she told me that the microphone was not working. Sounds familiar. Testing one, two, three, testing. Testing one, two, three. Every time you on the computer, don't start with me. Technology making our life easier. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh, just some roadway issues we've had over the last week or so. We've had, you know, issues with the quarry and muddy roads, so we've been dealing with that. Um, had an issue with North Penn Water Authority just closing Mainland Road for uh, some utility work that they were doing, so we got them straightened out and on the right path. Did they not have approval to do that? They just didn't Closed bother it? notifying anybody. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah. Um, the Sturgis Road development with the Pico work and that Danelle was doing. Uh, talked to them yesterday. There's yeah, there's still temporary electric lines that are running along the curb and crossing the street. So uh, I was told that March 15th is when they're going to do the, the cutovers uh, from the old to the new. So hopefully those will go away sometime in the, in the very near future. Uh, just some. Department activities, uh, we had a storm and lift collapse on Sturgis Road near Indian Creek Road, so uh, repair is scheduled for this week on that one. Uh, Park Avenue Fields, we aerated and top dressed both fields with leaf compost, uh, lined and seeded the, the areas to or both fields to, um, and we're also going to borrow some road blankets from the golf course to try to get the disturbed areas, uh, try to promote the, and facilitate the grass to grow. Um, continued trimming and mulching at the parks and township building. We're downsizing the bed, mulch areas where, where we can, where it's appropriate. Um, continue working on the installation of the camera systems on our dump trucks. That's just about completed. Uh, and that we're going to get uh, submit to Divot for a reimbursement through our uh, property liability uh, grants. And lastly, our trout stocking for our ponds are scheduled for Friday, May, March 24th, and Thursday, April 6th. Uh, I've got conservation officers from the Fish and Boat Commission that are going to participate along with the YMCA daycare, the kids, and also uh, the Salvation Charter School. So we'll do again like we did last year. We'll have some bars, some tanks from the tractor supply, the watering trough, and the thermal water, and dump the trout in the in the tanks and then let the kids scoop them out and throw them in the pond. So spectacular. Did a great yep. job with that last year. It yeah, was it was fun. fun. So I think it's good. It's a, it's a good thing. And with it's with the daycare right there. Oh know, yeah. And more concerned about the, the age of the kids, you know, but uh, they assured me that they would have plenty of parent volunteers. So it'll all be good. So that's all that I have. Quick question on the Park Avenue field, which is we, I did hear from a colleague of mine who's involved in football, and they had their banquet this past Saturday night, and very complimentary of Lower Salford for the facility and whatnot, so that was very nice feedback for everybody involved in the park stuff. I know we had talked a while ago, and I think it's still ongoing, but about assessing how we 
rent fields provide access to fields and and value like what's the, the cost for using those fields just update on that if we could <clears throat> where are we with that process well we have discussed it in the park board um it's not something that we have uh, made a final decision on but um we are also still actively trying to get a grant to have a a, a rec tap grant yes yeah, to called. decide what our power fields should be used or to give us recommendations on um, field usage. Um, it's a sticky wicket because a lot of them, when I say them, meaning the sports organizations, specifically the baseball organizations, really take care of the fields. Um, you know, they do the mounds and they do the, the bases and they keep, they do the striping and they do the fertilization and all those types of Fencing. things. Fencing. Yeah. But, yeah. So those are, those are things that, you know, are no longer our cost. So do we, there's a balance there. Do we charge a flat fee based on, you know, the size of the field, how often you're using it? Do we do some sort of a- Per participant fee. Say again? A per participant fee. Yes. Exactly. Some exactly. municipalities do that. So we haven't made any final decision. It's been the way it's been for, from the beginning. Um, and I know that other municipalities do charge for their fields. And I think that um, that's one of the reasons we are so popular is because we do not. So, um, so, well, and I, we have reached out to DCNR. Right. And last year, we kept being told that, oh, they're working on this program, they're, they're working, working on this program. Yeah. And, you know, she, and I will say, Holly's been very good about following up <clears> with <throat> them. And most recently, the person who was in charge of it is now. On he has an extended, extended leave. leave. <laughs> so we reached out to the person who was supposed to be taking care of it. Things Tim heard um, at Parks and Rec mm -hmm. in, in State College. So I will see if I hear from him today. Just want to know where that program is. Right. At. Yeah. If it's something we can't rely on, we can move in a different direction. Right. Then. right. That, I mean, I just I know that I've been hearing more and more. I don't know if anybody else has about you know the Alderfer, the new fields yes. over at Alderfer are starting to seed in and. What are, is anybody going to get to use them? Who's going to get to use them? How? So that's always going to be the, you know, the tip of the spear of trying to make sure that we have a, an equitable way to do it. You know, something that's not unfair to the township if we have a tremendous number of outside of the township residents. You know, if it was all township residents using it, that's a pretty easy that's discussion. But we don't have that scenario. That's and it's just, and what is the expectation for our level of maintenance versus, <laughs> as baseball knows, we do this, they can go here. Right. Soccer, we do this. If they want to mow extra, they'd have to do it. So I just, it would, I think with those couple fields at Alder for coming on, it's going to make that more of a, a pressing issue coming right. forward. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. We've had challenges with, you know, the Harleysville Eagles and yes. right. the River Cross, is, you know, and managing expectations of what they're supposed to do. I mean, in mm -hmm. hindsight, we probably let the fields you know, let the use start a year too soon. Right. So I think I would caution that, you know, same thing for the new order for fields. Right. Um, because we just, and, and part of it is the use. Yeah, they're the very intense uses compared to the ground, other ones. Especially right. when you're in with new grass and new fields that aren't fully established. Right. That is it's why the park board is stalling. Right. Like we, want, we want to see an established field before. Oh, I agree with that 100%. Yeah. But it's with the stall time, and I think it's the right it's the right time for us to get, we can get a our ducks in a row, yep. uh, okay. so to speak. <laughs> get out. Yeah. The other thing is, too, with cost, it would have to be per field, basically, and possibly the, the use of it based on what the orca sporting organization is. Like, you know, the Park Avenue fields, I mean, football is a much more intense mm -hmm. sport versus um, lacrosse. For example, if you look at they come in and use those fields in March, April, May, but yet they're using a field that was just recently used by football before winter set in. And now you have a field that may not be as wonderful as you would like it to be, but yet, you know, it's, it's, and and they the the lacrosse is not as an intensive a use right. as football. So where do you like say that Harley's will ego you folks should be paying a little bit more additional for the maintenance of these fields versus the lacrosse 
people, I, you know, those are things. Well, that's that why I think like almost a license agreement per season. Mm -hmm. And this is the expectation of the field starting and the end. And if there's a discrepancy, you know, how does that get fixed and funded? And I mean, right. there, are, there are ways to, to figure that out. It's just a matter of having a, an appropriate system in place to, to do that. But I, mean, I know with the community center, you have a, a sort of a license agreement with Harleysville Baseball and it stresses soccer. these things and soccer, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. it's, so. I think one thing too that uh, actually I noted when you mentioned the uh, resodding and all at the park field, Holly, you brought up too. So just to kind of touch base again, I know you talked before, Doug, about how you told you know certain organizations, hey, you know, try to practice here, here, here. I think it wouldn't be a bad idea for you know us to just give a formal letter to each one when they start the season. Hi, we're so glad to have you. Keep in mind, you know. Please try to respect the fields for others using it. Just to throw out there as well, because here you are fixing the grass and all. You brought it up again. We, have, yeah. the mark. The we already have it later. We, have we already do that. Okay. Yeah. Agreement. It goes out to everybody, and it basically irons that out. It says yeah. that you need to leave that field better than you found it, right. and that's kind of what it is. And um, there's going to have to be consequences. I guess. Yeah, yeah that's that's right. maybe an escrow, and yeah. you know that's where I think. And there's a fair way to do it, and everybody knows it ahead of time, rather than it being something that has to be. Mm -hmm. You know, at the end of it, oh look how they left it. This wasn't what we, right. hey, we all knew this going in. We let's face it, we know football is going to destroy the field. I mean, there's just that, that's the nature of that sport, the way they use the field. So how does it get restored each time they use it? Yeah, they've suggested astroturf. Well, we had looked at that. We actually did look at that for that. <laughs> really? and the price came in again yeah, astronomical. Yeah, that's the yeah. That's the, so the, 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 the far as well. Yeah, and it was expensive to make a paint long <laughs> And yeah, it's, it's not just the look to the fields as well. We also obviously have to be worried when, you know, you wear the field, people get hurt. You, know, like, you bring up Astro, we got Astro, toe, all that. <laughs> well, you know, we're facing now with park out in the fields, you got, they get used all the way up until, you know, past the growing season. Correct. And then, you know, the girls lacrosse starts before the growing season starts. Correct. So there's really no other than the middle of the summer, which is the worst time to try to see and you know, get get new grass to grow. There's really no time for the fields to rest and for for you know us to try and reestablish you know the damage that's been done. Yeah. So okay. but we deal with it. We're about okay. Stay on that. Yeah, I, I would say my only thought is if it doesn't look like the um, the grant money is going to be available. Let's just we can put that aside and come up with another plan to get to the same goal. Okay, sounds good. Yeah. Yeah. Agenda. Yeah. All right. We get done. Anything else for Mr. Jones? <laughs> Thank you. Thank you Thanks, Doug. You're up. Yes, sir. Uh, in addition to uh, Doug's update on the park camps, when we were uh, looking at the next phase and what locations we should be looking at, we were uh, discussing the uh, the golf course. Uh, since the level of activity over there would make it a good candidate. So on a site visit, we realized they already have a camera system uh, that we were not aware of. So they have 22 cameras. Uh, fortunately, the same vendor that is doing ours, the theirs, is the same equipment, and it is now incorporated into our system. Spectacular cameras. Um, Who was monitoring it before? They just the monitors. We, oh, okay. we got lucky there, but it would have been. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know that they actually monitor it on a regular basis. Yeah. I think what they had it for was if something happened, yeah. they could go back yeah. and look. Right. Um, I think the nice thing about having the system in now is that it's in our vehicles. If there's an alarm over there, the yeah. officer can go in his car, look at you know mm -hmm. the situation before he even gets there. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. yeah. <laughs> What's happening before arrivals? Yeah. So Michael's doing some uh, roll call training on how to run it on a PC, how to run it in the cars. Mm -hmm. So we uh, got about half the officers go through that. So uh, that's that's a big part of the project that uh, is already taken care of for us. Great, uh, nice. so, yeah. good stuff. Uh, the only other thing I have is the hiring update. Uh, tomorrow morning, we're doing the first round of interviews. Application uh, volumes down, but we also had a very short uh, open period, uh, we'll move that if we need to, but um, we're going to do a first round and then after the deadline of uh, March 9th, uh, hopefully we'll have more to do a second round. So, but uh, just getting these uh, first ones through and any backgrounds that uh, need to be done, uh, we, we should have a standing list 
uh, to, to move with, with. Just out of curiosity, is do you find the list is coming from people new to law enforcement wanting to get into it, whether they you know, or it's are you looking at transfers from other departments too? Uh, yes. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Uh, so a combination. Uh, they go on the academy visits. Okay. And that has generated a fair amount. And that's helping. Yeah, that's surprising. <laughs> Well, I hope the academy helps. Yeah. But they wonder, but uh, just uh, we, we're getting a lot of applications from the academy okay. uh, students, and uh, some some people with no experience, uh, some people with as much as eighteen years experience. So it's it's a mix, but uh, more would be better. That's all I have. Very good. Anything else for uh, Chief Medwood? Thank you. Michael in absentee, I guess, Joe, is that? Uh... Yeah, it's me. That's you. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, the building and zoning report for this morning, as of February 22nd, there were 27 building permits issued for the month of February. Um, at the planning commission uh, meeting on February 22nd, they recommended uh, 355 Maple Avenue, uh, which is the parking uh, lot upgrade <coughs> for approval. <coughs> The uh, High Point cul-de-sac, which is the backup plan for the Oak Drive situation over at the High Point at uh, Southford uh, Development, uh, was recommended for approval. And uh, the comments and component for a sewer sale uh, review was uh, given authorization to sign by the township. Um, for your meeting tomorrow night, uh, 25 Fretz Road, the Almac preliminary final land development, was uh was on your for approval um eight forty one main street preliminary final plan development was also on for your approval two eighty five maple avenue preliminary final land development at the Sips and Berries parking lot expansion uh, is on for approval uh the six ten letter rock station way conditional use hearing the accessory building is on for the hearing and whichever if the board decides to uh, move for approval on that. Ordinance 202301, which is repealing the fee schedule <clears throat> in the uh, zoning ordinance, is up for hearing and for approval. And then resolution, um, I guess that would be resolution. 2306. 2306 is the uh, building and zoning fee schedule. So that will update the fee schedule. And then from here on forward, any updates to the fee schedule will happen as a resolution as opposed to an ordinance. Um, and then uh, the last item on the four billion zoning issues on the agenda are 355 Maple Avenue uh, discussion of waivers. Excellent. <clears throat> Sounds good. Sounds good. So that uh, would then roll right into the manager's report. Thank you, Chairman. First item on the manager's report is the review of the meeting minutes for February 1st, 2023. If anyone has any questions, comments, or changes. Other than Kevin questioning whether we welcome Ken. It's up in the air. It's still up in the air. Okay, and the, the agenda for tomorrow evening, we just uh, kind of went over most of the items on there. Uh, the ordinance 202301, repealing of these. Uh, uh, schedule in the ordinance. Uh, the next item is a review of bids for all the for park and park avenue basin retrofit project, which Mr. Jones already discussed. Uh, resolution 2306, establishing the fee schedule. Resolution 2307, preliminary final land development for 285 Maple Avenue. Resolution 2308, preliminary final land development for 841 Main Street. Resolution 2309, preliminary final development uh, for 25 Fritz Road, Almac. And the next item is the tri-party agreement. I think we need to have a little bit of a discussion about this. Uh, just give an update, and, and that's why uh, Andy's here this morning to kind of give us an update of where that, that is. The tri-party agreement between Jacobs Crossing and High Point at South, Southford. So authorization to execute, determining, depending yeah. on whether that item is done. I don't know if you want to talk about that now. Sure, I can, I can talk about that now if you'd like. Um, so in essence, this tri-party agreement is an agreement between K Builders, who is the owner and developer of what was the Jacobs Crossing property, and Fox Lane Homes, 
who was developing High Point and Southford, which is right across the you know, Oka uh, Drive extension and uh, the township. And by way of a little bit of background, uh, the construction of the Oak Drive extension is actually on the Jacobs Crossing approved land development plan. Um, to a certain point. To a, to a certain point. However, um, Jacobs Crossing and the High Point development need Oak Drive to be constructed for purposes of their access. Uh, obviously, the High Point development is currently under construction. Jacobs Crossing, they have not recorded their plan yet, or K Builders hasn't recorded their plan yet. And there's, um, we're unclear exactly when they're going to begin construction at this point. Uh, Fox Lane and K Builders have tried to negotiate an agreement for Fox Lane to take over the construction of, of the Oak Drive extension. Um, they were unsuccessful by themselves. So the township uh, sort of stepped in and tried to help broker uh, an agreement between the two builders to get the Oak Drive um, extension constructed. And that's what this tri-party agreement does. Uh, it essentially permits Fox Lane to construct the, the Oak Drive extension, um, except for the wearing course, which would be completed by K when they come in and record their plan and build their project out. Um, the agreement also requires Fox Lane to post a bond to secure the improvements with the township. Um, we have a whole bunch of our standard land development agreement provisions in that tri-party agreement to make sure that that's constructed pursuant to the Jacobs Crossing um, land development plan. So uh, in essence, it's just a way for uh, Oak Drive extension to get constructed now as opposed to waiting for K to eventually record their plan and build out their project. Do we have any uh, idea what the timing is on this? For for Fox Lane? For, for yeah, Jake, the Jacob's Crossing Jacob's the K Crossing. project? Yeah. We don't. Um, I mean, they, they will tell us they plan to get going within a year or 18 the months. The last and, it's in this, but but, but it's a bit, it's, it, it is a little bit of a it is a little bit of a moving target, and they've admitted that for sure. Um, my issue with the leaving the base course exposed for a long period of time. In my experience, it starts breaking down pretty quick if you don't have that top course on there. But they're replacing the entire base course when they go to do their work, or they're just going to top it. I'd be afraid that the road would fail. I don't know, do you have any um, ideas on that? Well, I think if we, if an inspection is done prior to the, you know, the final wearing course, which is typically done, okay. then we address any deficiencies at that point. Uh, okay. Yeah, when, 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 uh, I'm sorry, just I mean, typically, prior to them dedicating it, we would have to accept dedication. Yeah. Okay. They would have to do a full inspection, repair any base. Yeah. And then they would still have the 18 month maintenance period after the top is on there based on a bond. So we have right. lengthy security on a situation like that. Yeah, and I but think I, when, when I Fox the, the critical component is before they top it to make sure that we don't the base any for an extended period, right, right. period of time. Heavy equipment may have gone over any, if, over, any right. defects should have you know reared their heads by then. Right. So that we can uh, we can make sure that our you know, engineers are aware and they're aware okay. so that we can get the proper repairs done prior to the wearing course. Okay. Mm -hmm. Very good. I, I guess the, the next one is sort of related, right? But really, the only, I mean, in this scenario, we have no risk in this. All we're doing is getting improvement that has been on our capital improvement plan front loaded by a developer who wasn't responsible for it, but needs it for his project. And the risk is between Fox Lane and, and K because Fox Lane's the one holding the bag. If Fox Lane is the one holding the bag, they're, they're putting up all the money to construct the improvement, and they're not going to get that money until K, until K builds. Right. We're so in no different position than we would have been if K came in to do their tri party agreement for their development. Correct. Correct? Okay. I think the only issue I see, and just, it just came to me, is just winter maintenance because it's not, you know, there's no it's, wear upon a wearing course. It's the developer's so responsibility. Satisfaction. Yeah, so there won't be any dedication, there won't be any of that. So it's, it's their responsibility. It's the developer's responsibility until point of dedication. I, I would right. assume that's, that's how it's written too. That's correct. Right. Yeah. Just like it would be just like Fox Lane's internal roadways. Um, they, they, they're responsible for, for keeping those right. maintained until they dedicate. Right. And to your but they may be long gone by the time the, uh, right. you know, the other developer. Well, but that's the question. Hey, here's my yeah. question. Fox Lane's responsibility does not end until K takes over, correct? Correct. So if K never builds, this is Fox, Fox Lane's Lane to complete, which would more than likely be Fox Lane would come in 
and say, we want to top this, we want to, we want to dedicate it, and we want to be done with it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. That's their only way out. Yeah. Their only way out is either um, K takes over or they dedicate per our standards, correct? Correct. Okay. Right. And if you, if you recall, Fox Lane, before they complete their project, they actually have to construct the, the culvert, the, the culvert portion of, of Oak Drive. So they're going to be there quite a while working on, on the Oak Drive extension. So by the yeah. time this is done, we'll have a substantial portion of the Oak Lane or Oak Drive extension completely bridge. Yes. Except for the bridge at the bottom of the hill. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're really big. So did you guys hear that? Everybody's running out. Five million dollars. Yeah, so we, we uh, <laughs> yeah. I guess township no. staff encouraged the two developers to come to an agreement um, by themselves. And so they wrote that, not you guys. Oh, well, they drafted the tri-party agreement, correct. But we, we, you know, they were they were not getting anywhere by themselves. So we had a meeting <laughs> here at the township building with township staff all the representatives of K and the rep representatives of Fox Lane and, you know, basically said, can we come to an agreement on, on uh, Oak Drive? And we hashed out some of the issues and and um, Fox Lane's council put together that tri-party agreement with the township on it. We added in our standard development agreement conditions into it. And that's the agreement they have today. Good. Yeah. Um, I guess part of that is, it was the next item on the agenda. It's, it's the... Um, extension of of the jacobs crossing plan i think that's resolution 2023 10. yeah 2023 10. um what, what what we discovered during that meeting with k and, and fox lane was that um k's plan approval the jacobs crossing plan approval is beyond um the five-year vested rights period under the pennsylvania municipalities planning code and what that means is Although their plan is plan approval is still valid, it's valid in perpetuity. After five years, you're subject to revising your plans for any changes in the ordinance that ordinances that may have happened after that five year period. So there's a five year protection period. Uh, they were unaware of that. Um, in response to learning that, they immediately asked us for an extension of that vested rights period. Um, they initially requested no um, definite time for the extension. They came back to 18 months. Um, there's a resolution that you have that would extend their vested rights period for one year from the date of this resolution. Um, and of course, it's conditioned upon them entering into this tri-party agreement. As Michelle looked at the approval versus the new ordinance, I mean, the biggest thing that's changed probably in the five years, the zoning hasn't changed, but the salad did. Um, has she looked at that in the context of this plan to see how far off one way or the other they are with regards to the waivers they receive versus what would be needed, et cetera? She did. So we asked uh, K Builders uh, engineer, who's been the engineer for the entire project, to submit uh, a memo to the township that listed, you know, all of the waivers that were previously granted and any any issues that may have come up given the fact that a, an entirely new subdivision land development ordinance was passed um, in the time since their plan was approved. Um, CKS did an analysis on their own. They also looked at that memo uh, and there were a few very minor changes um, in the requirements that waivers were previously granted for. And in fact, some of the waivers actually uh, went away as a result of the revision, because I, I think the new sal though, took into consideration some aspects of this type of, of development and some other uh, requirements changed, but they were relatively minor. So um, I don't think there was a significant issue there from a plan perspective. So from the staff standpoint, there does not appear to be. <clears throat> no, I mean, if anything should change, it actually changed to the benefit of K builders over okay. the Jacobs crossing approval. There was no negative impact, I would say, on that. They will still adhere to the waivers because they agreed to adhere to the waivers. Um, but if they had come back since the um, subdivision land of Millen ordinance was uh, changed, they would have had a shorter waiver list <clears throat> than they did process. What happens uh, when the extension runs out? Like, or if it wasn't extended to five years? And I, I was familiar with it, but what happens on their end? They would have to 
that it was quicker. How's that work? Well, their plan approval is still good indefinitely. Right. Um, it's just it, you're, it's just if there were ordinances that changed, then they would have to respond to those ordinances. That's that's basically it. Um, there are a few that have maybe changed a little bit here and there, but nothing significant from what the, the code looked like when it was originally improved. But you know, theoretically, if there was a significant change that happened, um, then they would have to you know come in and revise their plan accordingly. But as it stands right now, you know, I don't think that there's been a significant change based on the memo from Cave's engineer and then CKS's review of that memo. Or they could ask to waive the salvo that did change, right? Or they the zoning, could, zoning hasn't changed out there. Correct. <clears throat> that that's the more likely result. They would come in and they would ask for waivers from the new requirements, and then the board would make that decision Sorry. again. Yeah. 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 All right. So we good there. Moving on, uh, next item on the agenda tomorrow night is three fifty five Maple Avenue. Discussion of waivers. Uh, Followed by the conditional use hearing, the accessory uh, building at 610 Lenark Station Way. Uh, resolution 2311, authorizing the application for the DCNR grant for the Bayou Retention Basin at the Harleysville Community Center. Uh, next item is an indemnity agreement concerning PennDOT Highway occupancy permit for stormwater management facilities located in the right, right of way. This is uh, related to 841 Main Street. Um, and the next two items are approval of fire police assistance at the Harleysville Black Community Appreciation Day on June 10th and the Tom Ensign Days uh, Fisher Park on May 13th. Can I make one suggestion on the agenda? Mm -hmm. Just out of kindness to the court reporter during the conditional use hearing, should we move it up so that she doesn't have to sit through everything else? Or down, so she has to sit there. <laughs> I don't know. Just out of it, we don't have to adjust. It's just we can change. I mean, you obviously can change the agenda. Definitely. Okay, then we don't right. have to. I just have to change it, but I'll I'll make it. Having her in the middle there. Don't let me forget. There's a really important part. <laughs> All right, very good. One other question, Mr. Chairman. I know, and Kevin, you can pop in on this too. I guess. Obviously, we have a number of applications that are preliminary final land development approval. That's been a question of giving that waiver in the past. And part of the process has been, I think everybody who applies for that, they're relatively small applications, looks at that as, okay, we'll just wait to get the preliminary final to come in and get in front of the board on this discussion. Whereas if they were separating it, they might come earlier to us for preliminary approval. So that the time frame is a little bit different, but our past practice has been to do preliminary final. It's been raised. I just want to have a general discussion so that we can be staff can be advising applicants properly of how the board wants to operate with these so that we don't run into that problem and in fairness not have to always you know when they're coming in for that waiver have that discussion with them as one of those waivers so i just wanted to open that up for a quick discussion here just to see if that's the process we want to continue to follow through with the advantage so, of the advantage of having preliminary final is it allows the applicants the ability to work out some of the planning and engineering details in advance of getting in front of the board. The risk you run is if you come in for preliminary, there's a chance that you could have wholesale changes, right? Is you're going to come in very early, really after maybe the first comment letter from, from Michelle and, and Stephanie. And at that point, it's a, it's a possibility that, you know, significant changes could occur. So I, my preference is to, to wait for, for those reasons. I like to see a more complete plan if we're going to decide on um, making an approval that it, you know what's before us is what's actually going to be applied for. But that's and I know the Planning concerned. Commission is operated under the guideline that's told applicants, you do not move on from the Planning Commission until it's a clean application. Issues have been worked out. There's no like, the review letters are small, things along that line, where they would have the right to ask for that preliminary plan because there is, and Andy, correct me if I'm wrong, from the standpoint of final plan, once you have preliminary, final is really a, I don't want to call it an academic exercise, but it's a procedural exercise that you have basically just satisfied conditions of the preliminary plan and that you are ready to present plans for reporting and get land development agreements. That's right. I think the MPC says once you have preliminary, you're entitled to final plan approval in accordance with the preliminary approval. So right. You're right. It's just a, it's just a step of 
of cleaning the plan up and dealing with the conditions right. of preliminary approval. But in fairness, I heard what Kevin said, which is if you do it separately, that's two different opportunities for it to be heard at a public meeting. Correct. And I think that's been your point. Well, I, I know when I joined the board, I was actually asked specifically, okay, what's the difference between preliminary and final? And, you know, I don't know who told me, but I know members of the board who has advised me why, some of the reasons. Some of the other reasons are, as you said, get your marks in check. You know, let's make sure you follow through with the engineer's recommendations. Let's make sure you did this. Yes, it gives a benefit to the public. I specifically brought that up with Fernfield because that was one that as of Thanksgiving, nothing on the agenda. Then we had consideration of waivers then preliminary final land development, that doesn't give anybody an opportunity to even know that that happened right over the holidays, in my opinion. So when you do something like that, okay, we have a quick, here's all our waivers, here's the things. Yes, we knew about it as a board, but again, we had five days to look at that. It, those situations that did go through the planning commission, that was at the planning commission over a year ago. All that coming up tomorrow is another example where, yes, they've done some, you know, that is something that's been to the board before, but again, that's something that hasn't been on the board since I've been there. So it's not something familiar to me. That's my reasonings for certain situations. I could see situations where you might think, okay, I could understand it's such a small thing, but then again, you don't pick and choose. I, at least for me, I don't want to pick and choose. Well, you know, this is a quick one because it might be simple to me, but it might be something big to someone else. That's, that's my reasonings for the preliminary final end. There's a reason that they're in place. I want to make sure all the crosses are, you know, everything's marked up correctly. And, all the checks are in balance, it says reason. That's my other thoughts. I don't really have a preference either way. The preliminary final is fine for me. Um, yeah, I mean, separating them, I just don't, I can see it being, I can see Kevin's point. If somebody has a problem with it, it gives them more chance to, to complain about it or, you know, voice their opinions about it um, in between the preliminary and final. Um, but, Unless it's a really highly contested property, there really isn't ever any complaints. And and you have to advertise. You have to uh, notify all the neighbors anyway, right? Don't you? When you first start a um, a plan of what you're doing there, or no? Is that not unless it's a zoning change. Well, oh, zoning change. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So is it not more the time from from finding out about a project to to giving it the pro? Preliminary final. I just want to make sure I'm using the right. I mean, should we just ask for a, a better time window? Well, I, I think the window is, and is what what can happen is people will submit their preliminary plan. They'll get their initial review letter. It could take months to satisfy all the comments in that review letter. So then they'll come back and you know because they know they're working to try to get a clean plan before it comes out of the planning commission. Whereas I think you know it is a timing issue if. You know, I do this for a living, obviously, and I've made that clear to everybody. If I know the township won't grant preliminary final, we'll get, we'll push preliminary recommendation for preliminary from the planning commission much earlier in the process to get that preliminary done, because then I'll go through and cross all the T's and dot all the I's to come back in for the final, whereas I'll wait to push preliminary to just do preliminary final and do all that T crossing and I dotting at the same time so that when it gets in front of the board, it's done. So it's it's really and the reason I'm bringing this up is I just want for for many of these applications our process has been one way and to separate it at this point we did not give them the I don't think the township gave them the right guidance to get to where they're at and going forward let's just make sure we're giving them the right guidance so there isn't a problem down the road because it'll still function the same way you can still probably make it work within a similar time frame it's just a matter of how the applications get pushed and the direction the planning commission has for when they can make a recommendation for preliminary. Yeah, I guess just on, on that too, in, in my experience, um, since, since I've been doing approval resolutions here, the practice has been always to do preliminary final, unless the applicant requested preliminary, because sometimes an applicant might want preliminary plan approval in order to start you know, shopping the project for financing or to sell it or, or something of that nature. But if someone is invested in the, process and they're going to see it all the way through I think the preference and Chris would know this is is to you know get all of those issues worked out so that you can get preliminary finally come to the board one time um, and I think that's that has been the practice that that I've seen here over the course of you know several years I think a, a few other things too in the touch with uh, Supervisor Sharon said you know it's not so much too that gives people an opportunity to complain but in some ways it gives people an opportunity to really understand 
what is happening as well. There are certain situations where, whoa, what is this coming up? But again, if we have five days, it doesn't go out unless it's uh, anybody living near that burn field. You know, <clears> people <throat> are coming to me, what, what happened? You know, what, where did this come from? So those kind of things. I wouldn't say so much everybody you know, gives an opportunity to complain, which absolutely welcome to. I welcome that too. But we oftentimes we can educate as well. Um, in the past too, um, as to expectations, I mean, they're asking for a waiver. The expectations is that they bring a preliminary and a final. The fact that they need a waiver, it's like, well, you know, this is the this is what we have. It's well, that's the way. In fairness, to. under the MPC and case law, with that, mm -hmm. if a township routinely grants the same waiver, an applicant can have the and correct me if I'm wrong on this. There is a sense of there is an entitlement to that waiver being granted in the future. So if we've always waived concrete curb for Belgian block curb. We've done it for the 10 previous applicants. Right. The 11th applicant has the uh, assumption that they were going to get that. So I think that falls in that category of this is a practice of this township, not a, a so that's why I'm bringing it up because I don't, I, if yeah. we're going to change the practice, let's change the practice and not make it a controversial issue. I had, the, the, thing that, the thing that I don't like about what's saying with the practice, and I learned early, we had earlier on, it might have been actually, I think it was Jacob's Crossing. We can look it up in our minutes. They had... It was for, oh, they said similar to the waivers granted in Jacob's Crossing, which when I wasn't on the board, every property is unique. Every property has a unique situation. I don't think we should treat it as a general, well, we've done it before because maybe there's something here we didn't know. Maybe there's insight from neighbors we didn't see because I live here. I don't live over here. I don't cross that as much. I heard a lot about the things with the electricity happening on Scenic Drive. I'm not hearing as much over on Hunter's Crest, you know, so it's one of those things as well. And, you know, I know in the past, as Kent, you asked, what I've seen is we've had preliminaries come and you're right, maybe not all the crosses might be slashed the dots, you know, on the right. eyes, but we can see that they're making an effort, a concentrated effort. And in the timeline that I've seen where I've seen preliminary then final, and it's only been more recent that I've seen them kind of combined there, at least that I recall here, is it's been the month, you know, we had the preliminary one month, next month we have the final. And that's that was my take on that. That's that's why I'm hesitant to say, well, this we don't want to give the expectation that we're just going to say we'll waive this one. But for it to get, I, I, I'm a new guy, sorry. <clears throat> but for it to get the preliminary, it's already been vetted through planning commission. Planning commission. Yeah, yeah, it's already been vetted through the township staff. It's already been vetted through the professionals that we pay money to review, right? Yes. And typically, your outside agencies have also looked at it. So you have sewer authority if it's sewer. You have North Penn Water if it's got public water. If it's got highway permits, the department has typically seen the application. So the, right, it's, it's, so the hang up to me seems more like public notice and the public having opportunity. But if it's gone through planning commission. That's an opportunity as well for the public to get. So, sometimes we add things like I said, hey, you know, or not I, but you know, the board has said, let's put this, you know, make sure we do this going forward as well. And it's to follow through with that. I think one of the recent ones that one of my arguments was, hey, we're going, and they did say we will do this, but it was something that we added at that meeting. So it might not have been at the planning commission recently, or things in Saldo may have changed and such, not if you're going back again a year plus later. So, and that's the thing, you feel like, Kent, you have a great point. There are certain situations where you can kind of see it's right there, but again, we shouldn't pick a choose there. And maybe to your point, we should have a different procedure in place, but that's where I am now. Well, and it's not even, a procedure, it's just guidance. I mean, it's really, the, the procedure is what it is. They have to ask for a waiver, right? but the, the guidance I would su suspect is that we, the, the board wants to see a clean application. I mean, I think most everything that's coming through here is clean, probably has almost all their outside agency permits lined up, is relatively ready to Close go to construction. To Whereas oftentimes you'll get preliminary and that will be then subject to, they haven't gotten their NPDES permit yet, they haven't got their HOP yet, which is fine. And that's, it's, I'm not arguing one way or the other. I just wanna make sure that we're giving the right guidance so that when an applicant comes in, they know what to expect and we they they then follow that through because it is, it's a timeliness factor instead of it being, at the end that, oh, we're not going to grant that waiver for that. So, you know, you got to come back. It, it, it's really just a, for me, how we, we are presenting that process to people. I know when I go to Upper Providence Township, they used to grant preliminary final. Last two applicants I had gone through, the board just said, no, we don't do that anymore. You're going to do this and you're going to do that. Warrington Township does that. 
also, whereas a bunch of other places, no, 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 we, the board only wants to see it once. And the, so it's, it, it is a municipality by municipality, almost culture when it comes down to it. I'm raising it so that we make sure we understand what the culture is and how we want to proceed with it. That's all. Yeah. Again, I, yeah. Think, I think a lot of them are unique, so it's hard to it's hard to say for each one as a whole for me. So I well, but but then, then your answer is I like you see it. Like like yeah. So again, <laughs> well, the re whether the rest of the board will say, "Hey, this one is more unique or not," right. that's you know that's the take as the board collectively. That's what I meant by that. But for me personally, no, I like to keep them separate. What's the general? So it's, I mean, I, I again it could go either way. <laughs> if I might just add, yeah. one of the things you do here that I've never seen any place else is, and with the exception of Burnfield, and that was kind of an aberration only because it had been seen by the planning commission as so you know almost a year. Which one are we talking about? The, Burn, the Burnfield, the the houses on Morewood. So what was that development called? The, the, the um, two houses. Oh, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Turn on the border and come south. Yeah. Right, right. And the one right across the street yeah. off of Mars there. They were both, they're um, both on the same. Generally, you know, what happens here is that you do go through the waiver process, which is another opportunity because usually what happens is they give an overview of the development and then they ask for the waivers or however we've done it in the past. But I've never been in a municipality that did that. Right. So, you know, you do have an added step here. Which doesn't take place in, in other places, at least in my experience. Right. And again, I, for me, you know, as Ken, you said you were new when I first joined too. We had, we all had to go through like it was quite an, you know a difference. Uh, I understood it was different for everybody. It was new for me at the same time. But uh, I think when Dave, you know, came onto the board, it was one of my first times actually coming into the room too because we were online. So I know things were done a little differently, but I, I was attending meetings, you know, as you guys know, who were on here for the last year. The waivers, I didn't remember seeing that come to the board before. I do like have it, it was it was, that was, that was, was I got here. here. It was always that was a long time yeah. practice. Yeah. I think okay. COVID may have and that's why I wanted back to, back to back. say that that might yeah. have impacted what I didn't yeah. see, but uh, yeah. it was newer to me. Twenty years. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean and, and I would only say the last comment I'd make on this some of the redevelopment type activities, like for, for me, the, the parking lot expansion 285 Maple, that's almost to the realm of waiver of land development when it comes down to it, where a preliminary final makes sense in that regard versus a larger land development where uh, a Fox Lanes metropolitan job where you've got a lot of moving parts, you want to get the preliminary done, and then there's a whole bunch that has to get cleaned up with outside agency permits. So I, I do see an ability to differentiate those. And a lot of what we see what I don't want is I don't want to make the process so onerous that people don't want to reinvest, particularly in the redevelopment projects that we're seeing, which is a bunch of smaller properties, you know, that it's a small business owner that's trying to get through the process. And no, that, just, that double process costs money. This, this, pro it, this process is so arduous. Anyone who thinks it needs more oversight has never <laughs> taken a piece of ground so, to try to develop. So it's interesting you say 285 because that's one thing I was going to look up actually when I went home. I don't remember that being a consideration for waivers, final land development while we were here last week. Yet here it is on our agenda. I'm not positive. I was going to check. That yeah, was, it was, yeah, we was that a consideration? If you asked about the, because um, I know you asked about the said buffer. I didn't put that one on there for the preliminary file. I'm pretty sure I will check the video on that, but I didn't. Oh, you mean did they ask? Was that waiver? one that we discussed with a consideration? I don't think it was something that was. They know they. It was mentioned as an afterthought that I forgot to put that on there when they left, but we never discussed that. I don't believe. I thought, well, well, I'm not and sure. And again, I'll check the video on the yeah. positive, but that's, you know, but again, if, if that's the case. That is the perfect much, example that, for that one of the perfect example that if that's the reason, but that's one of those yeah. situations I want to double check. But, and that's why I didn't say anything earlier, but I'm going to look at that. And that's, that's my thing. But again, I understand it's a money thing because somebody said that to me early on with one of the developments. They said that would cost us if we do that, but again, I'm not worried about, you know, that's something, if that's in our waiver, that's something that I'm more worried about the residents understanding what's happening. That's well, I think we have to be careful. I think we have to balance both of those because many of these are also our residents that are doing these applications too. So it's a balance to make sure that we have a fair process when it comes through it um, and be reasonable. And that's the, all I was looking at. But I, you know, I just want to make sure we understand appropriate guidance is what it comes down to. Right, so that we're so staff is telling the applicants when they come in and make applications. Here's what you should expect. Here's what you should expect, and the planning commission should be made aware of. Hey, after their first meeting, there's a very good chance they're going to go get they're at least preliminary preliminary right. approval. Which I can tell you right now, Manis and John are not going to be thrilled with. But 
that's a different conversation. <laughs> right? Am I right? They don't normally work that way. They don't like it that way. Because it, the, I'm telling you, they want to get those details worked out. The planning commission meetings are advertised. If the community doesn't like a development, just like across the street from, I guess, is it on 113 Morwood, uh, there was 100 people here. I think you were, you might have been online for that. Meeting. But, but you, listen, when the, when the community doesn't like it, they'll, they'll let you know, they come, they come out. Mm -hmm. So, anyway. Forward. On that note, um, I want to mention to YouTube is uh, up, which is great that people can go back and see and that is helpful for things that people might say, hey, what happened here? Um, how does the rest of the board, and this is something we can discuss later, but feel about having all meetings on there? For example, planning commission meetings. Well, can we just finish this discussion first? Yeah, <laughs> yeah I'm sorry. And if you, want to, you can put that on a future agenda. No, I'm fine with talking about it, but I just wanted to make sure we haven't oh, yeah, wrapped problem. this yeah. closed yet, or do we want to think about it and just wrap this up? I mean, I, I think it might. Joe, Joe's looking for direction for Mike, I think, is how this would go. Right. So. And which is why I brought up. I just want to make sure it, it really can become a difference without a distinction as long as the guidance is right. And I'm just looking at it and say, we've got a couple that are coming this way with the guidance they received. And I think we should move forward with that yeah. appropriately. But as new applications come in, so we don't have to, you know, in fairness to you, and for we don't have to bring it up every time because we've got the right guidance going out to them. The applicants will react to that. If it's currently, and I, I agree with what you're saying, we, you know, it's nice to have guidance. So currently, we have a consideration of waivers, and they know it's a waiver. So if they were to come to us with that consideration, then probably we would have a discussion. With, and we have on the right, and that's what I'm saying. So in that case, we kind of do have that process for them. What expectations could come about would depend on that situation, that property. And the consideration of the waiver usually happens before preliminary finals. Mm -hmm. It happens at the late end of the process. Yeah, and that's an assumption that we're going to say sure. Yeah, we'll, we'll grab this one like that for instance. One, oh, but in fair, that's not always, not always, always that, right. But okay. sometimes we grant partial waiver approval and we deny others, and then sometimes right. we say, and they, they no, should have on the end in case, I guess. Yeah, I'll keep that. Right. And also, we are the backstop for the uh, residents, really. That's why we're elected, anyway. Right. That's why we're here. If we think it's not a good idea, we, we stop that, right? So, should problem that we good. You have a sense? No. no. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have yeah, we'll we'll have discussions with the development developers come in. And if you know sometimes it's Mike at the at the counter, right? He's gonna tell them, listen, you, you might want to seek preliminary approval on this separate from final because right. there's certain aspects right. that there's, need there's to get a lot of moving parts that they're you're gonna be hanging out there look, waiting for. You know, outside permit approvals and things like that, and that may be the process. If it's a smaller one, 355, I think Maple is a good example where really that's a very minor land development, and to, to go through a preliminary and then a final is still an overkill. Right. And here's one last question. I don't even know, and I should know this reference. Does final land development applications go back to the Planning Commission, Andy? Final? Yeah. Once you have final approval? No, once you have once preliminary approval. approval. Oh, I think if you only have a recommendation for yeah. preliminary, you have to go back. Otherwise, I think it sits there. So when comes yeah. again, that's what I've seen in our past. Yeah, because I mean, just you know, other municipalities, final goes straight to the Board of Supervisors. If your planning commission recommends final approval? Your planning commission, if you get a preliminary plan approval. Right. Oh, you don't Final only go, go straight to the board. Go back to the board. Yeah, because they are looking at it as a procedural item with right. regards to final is really signed record plans and developers agreements. Yeah. So I don't think that there's anything that says one way or yeah, the other. I'm just curious. Right. Sorry. sorry to be. That's all right. Yeah. 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 Good question. Think, I think the practice we had, I'm not sure what was. If oh, no. We've always had it. Yeah. If yeah. the township has made preliminaries, yeah. go back. Right. Good. Do we have need for executive sessions? We do not. All right. And I think our work is done. Very here. good. Thank you, Paul. Thank you. Are we done recording? <laughs> He's not sure. <laughs> she may not be done recording. Finish safe, so I pull the plug in.